So to solve the first one, yes, to solve the first one, what do we do? You mean this one here? I'm guessing. Um, yeah, like, can we just do one question? Yep. Yep. So maybe I'll, I'll give you a hint. This first one, you've got lots of options. You can try and factor the left side. Okay. If that doesn't work, you're going to check the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant deals with the um, quadratic formula. And if the discriminant is positive, there's two real solutions, which the quadratic formula will tell you. If there's zero discriminant, if it is zero, then you're, you've got one real solution, which the quadratic formula will tell you. If the discriminant is negative, no real solutions. The quadratic formula will tell you the imaginary solutions, but I don't care for those right now. Do you want to do that one? Or, problem two, uh, you're going to have to use the definition of absolute value to say that this is either 4 or this is negative 4, and you're going to solve. Solve both of them. You're going to get two solutions. You'll get 11, and you'll get 3. We just did that one. So I assume you want to do the first one. So here we go. All right, so uh, I'm me, I'm not going to factor this. Like, it, I look at this and I, I don't see something that factors easily. Especially, like, if there's a number in front of the x squared, I just hold up my hands and I say, I give up. Take me in. So I'm going to use the discriminant. So the quadratic formula says that solutions to quadratics, this is a quadratic, it's x squared plus an x plus a 1, or minus 1, whatever. It says if you take the opposite of this number, it's a positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's the 4, minus 4 times a, that's 3, times c, which is negative 1, and you divide that all by twice a, so here's a, here's b, here's c. These numbers, whatever you get here, this is the solution to the quadratic uh, set equal to zero. This is just a fact. Okay, You could start with a generic quadratic and solve it, and if you do, like if you had variables for 3, 4, and negative 1 instead of real numbers, if you solve it, you're going to get the exact quadratic formula, which turns into this. This in here is called the discriminant. It's b squared minus 4ac. So it's under a square root in the quadratic formula. Which means if it's a positive number, we have we have something we can compute. And we have a positive number here. This is negative four plus or minus. Sorry, I'm gonna shift this down. Okay. Um, negative four plus or minus square root of sixteen plus twelve over six. What is that number? I don't know. It's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 all over 6. You could simplify that a little bit more. Uh, square root of 28 is 2 times the square root of 7. Right, 28 is 4 times 7. So you could take the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 and you get the same square root of 28. So this is negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 7 over 6, which simplifies the negative 4 and the 2 root 7 both have a factor of 2, just like the denominator. 
So in this case, because they both have that factor of 2, you can cancel it out. Okay, what is this number? I don't know. It's irrational. It's some non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. But these are the solutions. This is also why I would not try at first glance to factor any quadratic that I see. Like this, this 3, I'm going to stay away from factoring. I'm going to go right to the discriminant. And if the discriminant's negative, I'm going to stop altogether and say there's no solutions. If it's zero, you're going to get your solution right here. One solution. If it's not zero, you're going to get some crazy irrational solution that might simplify down, maybe not. And this is it in this case. Okay. Questions on that? So this is the quadratic formula just in general. If you've got ax squared plus bx plus c, this is the quadratic formula that tells you the solutions to setting that equal to 0. So that's for any quadratic.